Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie. My pronouns are he, him. Karen Mills and I will be your service leaders this morning. We will also be the co-conductors. We have the privilege of being the co-conductors of our church choir, Coriolis. Our minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison, is off today. She's still enjoying some time off over the Christmas season. She'll be back with us next Sunday. Uh, before we begin, I do have two little announcements. One, um, which I was asked to make, but I know it's been taken care of, but I want to announce it anyway. Uh, you do recall that we had our lovely mitten tree, which was adorned with mittens and scarves and all sorts of wonderful winter wear that has been taken off and has been packaged up. It's been waiting for somebody to take it to the Bissell Center, and I've just been informed that Andrew Mills will be taking it. So thank you, Andrew. Uh, I know the weather is going to be getting much colder, so I know there will be those in our community here in Edmonton that will greatly appreciate our gifts. Also, I want to put a little uh, uh, reminder to everybody for Food and Friday, which is coming up the third Friday of the month. Uh, the last one was in November. Reverend Rosemary put on a spectacular spaghetti dinner. We were followed, uh, the dinner was followed by karaoke, which was an absolute blast. So keep that date in mind and you'll hear more about it as uh, we get further on into the month. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is one of two Unitarian congregations here in Edmonton. The other is Westwood Unitarian Congregation on the south side. Our faith is a creedless community dedicated to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace a pluralist philosophy, opening our hearts and minds to the diverse ideas, feelings, and expressions of our world community. Whatever your heritage, whatever your faith, whomever you love, however you identify, you are welcome here. I would also like to welcome all those who are joining us online. It is good to be together. And we respectfully acknowledge that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous people, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Inashinaabe, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. Just want to tell you a little bit about our service this morning. It is one of my favorites of our year. Our service this morning is, is inspired by the Teze tradition. This is a style of worship that was developed in 1940 by Brother Roger, who was a Catholic priest living in France. The Teze community is an ecumenical monastic order with a strong devotion to peace and justice through prayer and meditation. Prayer and silence are at the heart of the Teze experience, but also is music. Teze music highlights simple phrases, usually lines from psalms or other pieces of scripture that are repeated. The repetition is designed to be a form of musical meditation and prayer. Before we begin, I would ask that you take a moment to ensure that any cell phones or noise emitting devices that you may have with you this morning are either turned off or silenced. Thank you. For those uh, who are hearing impaired, we do have audio aids available. We are glad to have you with us this morning. We hope that you find something in today's service that nourishes your spirit and helps you find and keep your balance. We begin with a prelude. Oh, uh -huh. 
Our opening words this morning are by Carter Hayward. We are not automatic, automatic lovers of self, others, world, or God. Love does not just happen. We are not love machines, puppets on a string of a deity called love. Love is a choice, not simply or necessarily a rational choice, but rather a willingness to be present to others without pretense or guile. Love is a conversion to humanity, a willingness to practice with others in the healing of a broken world and broken lives. Love is a choice to experience life as a member of the human family, a partner in the dance of life, rather than as an alien in the world or as a deity above the world, aloof and apart from human flesh. Our opening hymn this morning is number 1029 uh, in the little teal book if you have, uh, but the words will be coming up on the screen behind me. For those who are online, your text should be coming up on your screen as well. I would invite you to rise as you're willing and able as we join in scene number 1029, Love Knocks and Waits for Us to Hear. I'd now like to invite Kathy Loiselle forward to light our chalice. And as she does, I will read some words by Tom Goldsmith. Symbol of light and knowledge, symbol of warmth and freedom, we light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. Here we gather to celebrate hope and the infinite possibilities of love. We'll now take a moment to share that love with each other and the wider community through a sharing of our abundance. One of the purposes of this church community is to encourage all who gather here to grow more generous in spirit and in action. And in addition to supporting this community, we also make a certain monthly commitment to the wider community. And one half of the unidentified cash that's received is given to an outside organization. We take an offering that allows us to exercise that all-important generosity of spirit, an offering that will support this self-supporting church and its many ministries. And for the month of January, we are also supporting Change for Children. As the ushers collect this offering, I'll tell you about this organization. In cooperation with the Indigenous people of developing countries, Change for Children aims to identify the root causes of poverty and, in the spirit of solidarity, assist in finding long-term solutions. Change for Children fulfills this purpose by supporting projects which lead to self-sufficiency and a more just distribution of the world's resources, and by maximizing the effectiveness of each donated dollar by applying to government agencies for matching grants and by ensuring appropriate administration of funds. 
Their water projects place an emphasis on the empowerment of women as decision makers, community leaders, and change makers to ensure long-term sustainability of projects. Reliable access to clean water means that children attend school. It means healthy communities. It means an increase in economic pursuits. For those of you online, we encourage you to visit the Change for Children website, and you can make your donation there. And we thank all of you for your generosity of spirit and action. So we, through all we do here in this community and the wider world, we are involved in an important spiritual work of creation and compassion. And as we receive the offering, please join me in singing from you I receive. I invite you to join in a responsive reading. If you would like, it's number 610 in the hardcover hymnal, but the response will also be printed on the screen. Am I going to begin? You are. Oh, I'll begin. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I'll begin, and I'll ask you to respond with Karen. Karen will lead your part. I will begin. Where in our hearts is that burning of desire? It is true that we are made of dust, and the world is also made of dust, but the dust has motes rising. Whence come that drive in us? We look to the starry sky and love storms in our hearts. Whence comes that storm? The journey of love is a very long journey. But sometimes, with a sigh, you can cross that vast desert. Search and search again without losing hope. You may find sometimes a treasure on your way. My heart and my eyes are all devoted to the vision. And so we begin the Teze tradition. Within our little teal hymn book, there are two Teze hymns, which we always sing at this service. Number 1034, De Noche. Uh, we will be singing this in English. You're invited to remain seated as we sing this hymn. Now, one thing that I point out is that when we're singing Teze hymns, they may go on for a while. We don't know. We will allow the Spirit to move us to sing this tune as many times as we need to. Let us remain seated as we join in singing number 1034, De Noche.
Each week we take time to light candles. You notice that some have already been lit. These candles represent so many different things. Prayers, wishes, concerns. And so we'll take a, a moment this morning to light candles. For those of you who are online, you're welcome to add your thoughts, your prayers, your wishes into the chat. I have a reading for you first, and then if you wish to light a candle, I'll invite you to come over on my left. Our tapers are here. Light your candles, and then on the farther side of the table are glasses of water where you can extinguish your, your candles. We're going to have an, a bit of an extended period of time to light candles this morning, so there's no rush. You can take your time. The choir will be singing, and in your own time, you're invited to come forward. I offer you these words by Sarah Ruth Davis. As you come forward, I invite you to hold your candle and bring it into your focus, to notice and feel the wax, the weight in your hand, the shape of the circle. Fire symbolizes energy, spirit, soul, as we bless these candles, I invite you to bring the energy of the earth up from your feet to your candle, to bring down the energy of heaven through your hand into your heart, into your hands, to the candle that you hold, to breathe deeply of the energy all around us, within us, and to fill your candle with our collective energy. Let us bless these candles with our gratitude for this year of life, of love, of joy. Let us bless these candles with the tears of the sorrow of our losses, the bitter weeping in the night, and the tears that we were unable to cry that cling still to our throats and in our chest. Let us bless these candles with our tender hopes for the coming year and let their fire burn in our holy desire and passion of life. Let us give deeply of ourselves and to our, ourselves to the purpose and calling to share our light with those who join us in this moment in history and shine it forward to those who come after. Let us be the hope of our ancestors as we light these candles, carrying with us their dreams and gifts within the forward walking of our feet. Let us bless these candles with intention and purpose and with knowing we are one. I invite you to come forward, if you wish, in your own time to light a candle.
This reading is entitled, Human Core Functions is Love by Adrienne Marie Brown. When we are engaged in acts of love, we humans are at our best and most resilient. The love and romance that makes us want to be better people. The love of children that makes us change our whole lives to meet their needs. The love of family that makes us drop everything to take care of them. The love of community that makes us work tirelessly with broken hearts. Perhaps humans' core function is love. Love leads us to observe in a much deeper way than any other emotion. If love were the central practice of a new generation of organizers and spiritual leaders, it would have a massive impact. If the goal was to increase the love rather than winning or dominating a constant opponent, I think we could actually imagine liberation from constant oppression. We would suddenly be seeing that everything we do, everyone we meet, not through the tactical eyes of war, but through the eyes of love. We would see that there is no such thing as a blank canvas, an empty land, or a new idea but everywhere there is complex, ancient, fertile ground full of potential. We would understand that the strength of our movement is in the strength of our relationships, which could only be measured by their depth. Scaling up would mean going deeper, being more vulnerable and more empathetic. Each of us, by our work here, contributes to a movement of love. May love hold and heal those who need to be held and healed. May love guide more and more people every day. May our work together bless the world. I invite you now to join in singing There is More Love Somewhere. It's number 95 in the hardcover hymnal if you're following along there. I'll just give you a little insider tip. On the third line, the first word find is going to be longer than you think it is. Love, it sits in the chest, at least at the start. It's what makes our heart beat again after being broken, and our lungs breathe again after being closed off in the dark for far too long. 
For some, it came in the form of grandfather's eyes, which saw us as carriers of something bigger and more precious and older than our little bodies disclosed. For others, it arrived as uh, we pressed hard against our mother's warm skin and heard a speechless whisper that said, you can always come home. We recognize love as the thing that allowed us to finally remove our masks, or that which said, I don't want you to remove your mask until you're ready. We were taught love by those who arrived in the midst of our fear and shook as we shook, instead of simply trying to make our trembling stop. But here's the secret, the inevitable awakening, the wonder that each of us is meant to reveal. Love doesn't just love us, it asks us to become it. That's why those metaphors of comforting quilts which wrap us in their warmth won't do. True love is always a thunderstorm that cracks us clear open so that echoes of other breaking hearts can make their way in. Yes, it wants us to be whole and strong, but love's deepest longing is that we will use that strength to tear down the structures that leave others bloodied and bruised. We must always remember what Selma's prophet of peace regularly preached, love and power are always rightly wed. And maybe that's where the second secret comes loose. As I shake the walls to let others free, I learn the ones that I've liberated include myself.
Our next reading comes from the UUA's Braver, Wiser collection, a collection of messages of courage and compassion for life as it is. Every Wednesday, the UUA delivers an original written reflection and a brief prayer grounded in Unitarian Universalism. And if you like, you can sign up to receive these by email on the UUA's website. This morning's reading is Love Showed Up by Elizabeth Harding. Elizabeth is a community minister with Second Unitarian Church in Chicago and serves as one of the bereavement counselors for Journey Care, the largest nonprofit hospice and palliative care provider in Illinois. And she begins her uh, reflection with a quote from Mary Oliver. What is your heart doing right now? Remembering, remembering. Elizabeth writes, Patricia was in our hospice for three years. She had lung cancer, and by the time I got to know her, she had beaten all the odds. Patricia was extraordinarily blunt and independent and quirky. At one point, she even fired as many hospice team members as she could manage, including me, the chaplain. When Patricia was nearing the end of her life, her son Richard came to Chicago. He didn't believe it at first, but slowly he understood that Patricia was at the end of her life. After she died, Patricia's neighbors came to me and said, we need to acknowledge Patricia's life, but Richard doesn't want to have a memorial service. The we she was talking about were Patricia's friends and neighbors, all of whom had pitched in to take care of her and had grown to love her. They were sad. They needed to share their love for Patricia with each other and to get to know Richard before he returned to his life out of state. Patricia's neighbor and I agreed that she would round up Patricia's friends and the other neighbors and would put some food and drinks out in Patricia's condo and I would lead a time of sharing. I began the evening by lighting a candle. I read some poetry I knew that Patricia would like, then shared what I knew of her life, a eulogy of sorts, inviting people to share their favorite stories about her. We closed the evening with more poetry, and then I blew out the candle. Afterwards, Richard approached me. Thank you, he said. I didn't know I needed that. Remembering is the act of holding a memory and sharing it. It's drawing upon that memory so it can help us grow into people who live lives of meaning and service. As a practice, remembering connects us deeply to each other and to the love that sustains us. Richard may forget the content of the stories he heard. He may forget the name of his mother's friends. He won't forget that Patricia loved him or that she was loved. Love showed up when Richard was feeling bereft and held him close. May our challenging stories, the ones full of pain and sorrow, merge with the stories of joy and laughter as we reflect and remember, held by the great sustaining love that accompanies us. May we feel content in the richness of this sustaining love. Amen, and blessed be. We now have the tremendous honor of having a world premiere of a new Gordon Ritchie piece. This is the first of two in this service. So I'm so glad you came to hear it. This is called Deep in My Soul.
A reading by Kevin Tarsa entitled Psalm 23 for this moment. May I remember in this tender moment that love is my guide always, shepherding me toward ways of openness and compassion. I have what I need, really, with love at my side, above me, below me, in front of me, behind me, inside every cell of me, love infused everywhere. Just when the weight of the world I inhabit threatens to drop me in place and press my hope down into the ground beneath me, love invites me to rest for a gentle while and leads the center of my soul to the quiet, still, restoring waters nearby that somehow I had not noticed. And so, quietly, Love sets me once again on its tender and demanding path. Even when the walls close around me and the cries of death echo through untold corners, gripping my heart with fear and sadness, I know, I know that all will be well, be well, that I will be well, when love whispers near to me glints at the corner of my eye, rests with gentle and persistent invitation upon my shoulders. Yes, love blesses me, even as the sources and symbols of my pain look on. Love blesses me from its infinite well, and I turn and notice that goodness and kindness and grace follow me everywhere everywhere I go. I live in a house of love, love that will not let me go. I lo live in a house of love and always will. Our next Teze hymn that we will sing together is Nada de Turbe, number 1047. Traditionally, within a Teze service, we will hear many languages. Now we get to hear Spanish. Nada de Turbe, nada te espante. Quien a Dios tiene, nada la falta. Nada de Turbe, nada te espante. Solo Dios, basta. Let's remain seated as we sing together, Nada de Turbe.
now invite you to join in a responsive reading. I'll begin and ask you to respond with the words that Gordon is going to lead, let us love. Rooting ourselves in love as the source of all we are. Let us love. Acknowledging every person and all of nature as unique, important, and wanted. Let us love. Learning that we are not whole until all beings are whole. Let us love. Sharing and relating with one another as each feels comfortable. Let us love. Working to be anti-racist and opposing every oppression. Let us love. Drawing nearer to beloved community on this, our one planet. Let us love. And let us sing of that love with hymn number 10, Immortal Love. Kathy to come forward to extinguish our chalice. In the name of all that is holy, may the connection between us inspire and sustain us. May the flame of life within us and amongst us be sacred reminder that we are all called to serve, to grow, and to love as we continue this journey of transformation. We have a postlude, which is our second Gordon Ritchie premiere, and then we'll ask you all to join us with Carry the Flame.